In this vSphere with Kubernetes demonstration, we're going to take a look at the embedded registry provided by Harbor. This allows us to have container images stored locally rather than reaching out to an external repository. So we already have vSphere with Kubernetes configured. If we go to the cluster and the configuration view, there is an image registry with a single click of a button we can enable Harbor. We do have to select the storage policy because as part of the Harbor deployment, there is a requirement for persistent volumes. So we're going to pick a vSAN policy here. And so that initiates the deployment. So you can see that there's a namespace, a system registry namespace already created, and we can speed things up and we can see the seven pod VMs being deployed. And these all part, uh, provide part of the functionality of Harbor. Now, as is mentioned, we did select a storage policy. So uh, four out of these um, pod VMs do require some sort of persistent storage. And if we navigate back to the cluster view and then under monitor, we do have a container volumes view that we can see here towards the end. And there have been four persistent volumes created on behalf of the Harbor uh, registry. First one here, the component is the database component. This next one, we can see the component is actually for Redis. A, the third component, the registry, and the final component is the job service. So let's go back and see how things are going and progressing. Go back to the image registry under the namespaces, and we can see that it's now up and running, and we have been given the URL to link to that's been provided by the NSXT load balancer. So we can log into this as part of our SSO domain. So we can just log in using uh, the administrator at vSphere.local credentials. And we can see uh, that there's nothing really of interest at the moment. But what's really uh, interesting with vSphere with Kubernetes is that every new namespace that we create, every new namespace will actually build a project within the Harbor registry. So it provides that sort of security and isolation and multi-tenancy that we want to have for different teams of developers. As you can see, I just highlighted here at the bottom immediately after creating that namespace, we can see some work being done on Harbor and there we can see our first project. Of course, we don't have anything in the, um, in the project yet. We don't have any images, so that will be our next step. Now, in order to be able to uh, communicate to Harbor, we do need to have a certificate in place on our client. So I'll show you what happens if you don't have that certificate in place. So here we're going to tag a Photon image from VMware, and we're going to try and push that up to our Harbor registry. And you can see we get an X509 certificate error. So we need to put that in place and that goes in my Ubuntu distribution that goes into Etsy Docker certs.d. What you do is you create a folder for the Harbor registry and then you put the certificate in place in that folder. So now once that certificate is in place we can actually go back and we can try and push up some new images and see if they work. So this time I'll try to push an image for uh, BusyBox, and if you don't specify a version, it'll pick the latest. Um, and just to show you that, if you wanted to push a non-latest version, let's say, um, I can take my Cassandra application here and I can add the tag for v11, like so, and that will push up that particular version of the image. So that looks like um, two images successfully now pushing up because we have the certificate in place. And now if I pop back onto um, my Harbor view, UI view, and then just do a refresh, I can now see that I have the two images up there. And again, if I select the Cassandra image, you can see it's version 11. So that completes the demonstration.